Uh, David, what's going on here today at the cemetery? We're, we're holding a stone restoration workshop, the first one that has ever been held in the cemetery, to my knowledge. Um, and the friends have been wanting to do this for a long time, and we took as our example the workshop that Tamara did last year in Eastern Cemetery, which several of us attended. So we wanted to invite her back. So Tamara, being a gravestone restoration specialist is not a career that everybody goes into. What attracted you to it first? Um, I kind of came by this in a side route. Um, I actually, when I was five, I lost a brother. So I grew up in cemeteries. I learned to read there and hung out there a lot with my mother. And then we just took care of family plots and that. But I went off to college to do fine art. But I love history. I love stone. I want to be outside. And I just kind of got attracted to this kind of thing, went to a workshop, and that was it. <laughs> that was 15 years ago. So, uh, There's a lot of do's and don'ts in terms of gravestone restoration. So sort of what are the top what are the top do's and don'ts that people uh, people who are interested in restoring perhaps their own family gravestones what should they think about what should they not do? Well, I say that 90% of my work is fixing good intentions. People mean well, but they they don't educate themselves on products sometimes. So I find a lot of like liquid nails or bondo or something trying to put things back together. If it's in pieces, you're going to need a professional. But if you just need to clean the stone, water, water, water. Don't use bleach. Don't use any of these products like that. Um, I do use a biocide called D2, which you can get at paint stores and stuff. It's what um, wallpaper and painters use to, to kill the mold. And, and that's good if it's covered with like mold and lichens. But you know, sometimes it's just caring and, and setting them up straight. That's mainly what we're going to show today is just a little bit of, you know, prevention can really help save the stone. But what are they made of? What are they? How do we treat them? How do we know what to do with them? <coughs> Marble is very common in the cemetery around here. Marble starts as limestone. Well, it actually starts as little sea creatures like a billion years ago and it fell to the bottom of the sea and got compressed it's a sediment rock it's just kind of st stuck together a little bit limestone when it's pushed underground and gets pressure and heat added to it crystallizes metamorphosizes and becomes marble most of your modern stones <coughs> are granite it's a uh, let me get this right igneous stone and it's formed in the magma chamber depending on what materials were there and how quickly or slowly it cooled over millions of years. Size of the crystal you get, it's a very hard stone. But don't be deceived, hard is brittle too. Mm -hmm. So if a tree bra a branch hits it, it's liable to plunk off that corner, fractures in a very different way. But cleaning it, I mean, you can. it doesn't sugar as we talk about um, the marble, little grains will separate. We call that sugaring, so. And today's class, what are you going to be showing? Um, we're going to start with the basics and just how to document a stone and, and um, you know, tell what's wrong with the stone. We're also going to do some simple cleaning and resets of small monuments. Then later in the day, we're going to show how to um, pick up a larger stone. I have a tripod and mortaring back together. and those types of techniques. Plastic, plastic, plastic. Plastic good, metal bad. That's all you need to know. Plastic, plastic, plastic. A lot of the damage on here will be from, uh, sorry, mowers getting too close, little nicks. Metal is just its worst enemy, especially on this very soft stone. So I also have plastic garden trowels that I use. They're like a buck at the dollar store, you know? <laughs> I might scrape off some of the lichens with the, with the plastic trowel first, if, especially if it's very thick. Mm -hmm. Get into some of the places. Um, you're fortunate here because there's water. Sometimes there isn't water in the cemetery. You've got to bring it in yourself. I like to use the jugs of water. Some people like these, um, uh, like, like sprayers that you use for pesticide or something, you know, little pump mm -hmm. sprayers. 
and it just just doesn't give me enough water you know it's water 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 the wetter the easier you'll see so I'll just give it a little scrape take off the big clumpy stuff now one of the main things to remember is when you do start to wet it down and wash it is to start at the bottom and work your way up otherwise you'll get streaks running down and then you really can't get rid of them and then water and more water once again from the bottom up because we don't want streaks so we'll rat him around and some people you know AGS in a few places you know suggest soap and photo flow and so just with some little soft brushing my water is going to turn dark soon but we can just watch this go away it's like one of those wow sham kind of commercials <laughs> <laughs> now how much you is there? But look how nice William's looking already. Oops, more water. Then it's him up. How's he look now? When you look at modern gravestones, they're very shiny and um, glossy and hard granite and that sort of thing. Are a lot of the gravestones that you restore, are those, were those, did they look like that when they first started or were they different stone altogether? <clears throat> um, yes, and I'm always amazed and I wonder what did these look like on a sunny day? When you're filled with a uh, uh, cemetery filled with these white marble, they had a high shine. One of the ways that they defined marble from limestone was it took a polish. And when I take some of these monuments apart, in between these layers, there's still a polish. It's still, it hasn't been affected by the environment. And they're shiny and they're bright. And you think, you know, 50 or 100 of these standing out in a cemetery on a crisp fall move morning what did that look like you know it was pretty pretty impressive I think as you go through restoring uh, gravestones uh, what sort of sense of history you do, do get the sense of the lives of the people of the, the gravestones well I do say that these these cemeteries are museums to the average guy sometimes you don't know uh, a lot about the person except what's on that stone sometimes town records were lost or you know, it was never even written down, but, you know, for, we can tell a lot by the person, by the size of the monument. Um, you know, you know they had some kind of wealth. Um, it may state on there how they died or at least their age and um, maybe a verse and how they felt about things. Um, we can tell a lot about who carved it or, or where it was made, where it came from, the industry of that time. So they're pretty impressive and and stand up over records you know but the cemetery has so much work in it and the friends is such a small group that it's difficult for us to sort of do this on our own so we've enlisted the city to help us get started on this and help provide materials and um, we've managed to get um, I think about 21 people today to come to this workshop and and participate so we're, we're delighted that we've had the turnout that we have as a friends organization, our mission is to restore, protect, and conserve the cemetery for future generations. And part of that, if we really take it to that level, would be looking at the stones themselves and what condition they're in. And there's never been a survey done of the stone condition. And a lot of them are in rough shape and need help. And I think as a friends group, we would advocate for doing that on a yearly basis and holding a workshop or getting together with a group and taking on a few stones and, and from this workshop, we should learn how to do it. If people are interested in helping the friends with this project or other projects, how can they contact you? Uh, they can contact us through our website. Um, I think it's uh, www.friendsofevergreen.org. 
You can see all that's going on with our friends organization and our walking tours on the website. Thank you.